Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. We are here to discuss about communication systems. Today we are going to talk about wireless communication system. I am able to communicate to you via making use of wireless communication system. So let's understand details of a wireless communication system. In today's topic, you will be able to describe the two different modes of communication. You will be able to describe the communication via an unguided media which is also known as the wireless communication system. We will discuss about details of ground wave propagation and we will understand about sky wave or ionospheric propagation. So let us continue with our discussion. Whenever we talk about communication, we see that the communication systems can be broadly put into these two categories. The first one being a wireline communication system where with the help of a guided media, we are able to transmit the signal through a connecting wire in between or some medium in between from one end of the receiver to the other end of the receiver. The other kind is the wireless communication system which is making use of an unguided medium which is primarily air or space. So over here the transmitter radiates the signal and it is received by the receiver and a radio wave transmission is one of the common examples which indicates a wireless communication which means that you do not need to put any wire in between for this communication process to take place. Now let us have a look at the various kinds of wireless communication systems which we see around us. So let us talk about wireless communication system where may we are making use of unguided medium. Whenever we say that there is a wireless communication system, it simply means that it is going to be radiated in space or in air and the receiver at the other end is going to pick the signals. So the signals will be taken directly from air or space. The unguided propagation takes place via air or space and that is known as a wireless communication. When we talk about wireless channels, they are public which means that the information is in a public domain. The transmitter antenna is radiating the signals which can be received by any antenna which is tuned nearby. So it is primarily in a broadcasting mode. So whenever we want to broadcast something, we prefer using wireless channels. But for any kind of private information, a wireless channel is usually avoided. The waves are transmitted in various ways. The one of them is ground waves, other one is sky waves or broadcasting waves. The wireless transmission is highly flexible, but interference and noise are really very prevalent in the wireless mode. So whenever we talk about the wireline mode, there is less of interference and noise, but in the wireless mode, there is a very high possibility of interference and noise because the signal is available in the public domain. It is there in air and the transmitter will simply radiate it and the, any receiver can catch that signal. And that is why these are some of the issues with a wireless transmission. Let us talk about different types of wireless communication system that is unguided signal transmission. When we say unguided signal transmission, it simply means that the signals will not be communicated via some material medium. The space communication or the wireless communication basically implies that the information is being transmitted and the wireless communication takes place by the transmitter and the receiving station utilizing the space around the earth. We are using the atmosphere and that is why it is also called space communication. The various layers of the atmosphere play a very very important role for space communication. 
Therefore, it is very important for us to understand various layers of atmosphere which are helpful for the space communication process. Let us talk about different layers of atmosphere. As already studied in geography as well as in physics in prior classes, you know that the atmosphere is broadly classified into these four layers based on their height that is the stratosphere, the troposphere, the mesosphere and the ionosphere. Now, we are talking about the layers of atmosphere which are basically used for communication purpose. So, the first layer which is basically used for the communication purpose is the sea layer of the atmosphere which is basically in the mesosphere. That is, it is 60 kilometers nearly above the surface of the earth. It primarily reflects electromagnetic waves which lie in the range of 3 kilohertz to 300 kilohertz. This particular sea layer is used for direct long range communication. Another layer of the atmosphere which is basically used is the D layer. This D layer is in the ionosphere and it is about 80 kilometers above the earth's surface. This D layer reflects the electromagnetic wave in the low frequency range lying from 3 kilohertz to 300 kilohertz, but it absorbs the medium and the high frequency range. When I say medium frequency range, it starts from 300 kilohertz up to 3 megahertz and the high frequency range is from 3 to 30 megahertz. Apart from this, the other layers of the atmosphere which are basically used in the process of communication are the E layer, the F1 layer and the F2 layer. So, let us go into details of the E layer. The E layer is at a height of about 110 kilometers. This E layer basically helps in propagation of the medium frequency range, but it reflects the high frequency range during the daytime. Other than that, we have this F1 layer of the atmosphere, which is part of the ionosphere. It is at a height of about 180 kilometers and it allows most of the high frequency range to pass through. F2 layer is at a height of around 300 kilometers during daytime and at about 350 kilometers at night. The various layers of atmosphere vary in thickness due to temperature. So, at night when the temperature changes, the layer is at a different height. This F2 layer reflects electromagnetic wave up to 30 megahertz and pass the further high frequencies. All these five layers of the atmosphere help in the communication process that means the wireless communication system based on the frequency is using one or the other layer of the atmosphere. Let us talk about ground wave propagation. To understand ground wave propagation, let us look at this as the surface of the earth. So, on the surface of the earth, let this be the receiver and let this be the transmitter. So, we need to understand that this range is very very limited. So, in case of ground wave propagation, the EM wave travels along the surface of the earth. So, the ground waves are useful at lower frequency and these are the only ways to communicate in the oceans with the submarines. The frequency which is basically used is from 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz which is basically used for ground wave propagation. This ground wave propagation has a limitation and this cannot be carried with higher frequencies. When we want to transmit large data, the more the frequency of the wave, larger is the data handling capacity of the wave. So, over here we have to only work with lower frequencies otherwise ground wave propagation is not possible. Apart from ground wave propagation, we talk about sky wave propagation or the ionospheric propagation. When we talk about the sky wave propagation, instead of using the earth's surface which helps in propagating the waves, now we are using the layer of the ionosphere, especially the F1 layer of the ionosphere which helps in the communication process. So, when we look at this diagram, 
we see over here that from the earth transmitter which is radiating the signal and it is radiating it towards the sky. These sky waves are then reflected from the layer of the ionosphere and then it comes back and is received by the receiver. So, in the sky wave propagation we make use of the layers of the ionosphere. When we say sky wave or ionospheric propagation we are primarily dealing with electromagnetic waves which are in the frequency range from 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz. These are basically launched by a transmitting antenna which travels towards the upward direction and then it gets reflected by the ionosphere and returns to the distant locations. At optical frequencies the ionosphere is primarily transparent but at radio frequencies it reflects the electromagnetic radiation back to the earth. So, we make use of the radio wave range and not the optical frequencies to carry out sky wave or ionospheric propagation. Let us talk about space wave propagation. When we say space wave propagation basically we are utilizing the space in between and over here there are two distinct modes of propagation in case of space wave propagation. From the receiver to the transmitter vacuum or free space can be utilized to receive or to send out the signals. So, let us have a look at the space wave propagation diagram. In the diagram we see over here transmitter is sending the signal from the transmitter to the receiver. So, there is two different modes either it receives through the direct wave mode the transmitter is directly in the line of sight or else it is reflected via the surface. So, when we talk about space wave propagation we are primarily working with very high frequency radio waves. So, very high frequency radio waves which are in the range of 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz are radiated by an antenna which can reach the receiver either traveling directly through the space or after reflection by the curvature of the earth. The curvature of the earth plays an important role. The direct wave mode is much more dominant, but it is limited by the so called line of sight transmission distance and curvature of the earth. The height of antenna also restricts the extent of the curvature, which means that when we look at the space wave propagation over here in the diagram, if this transmitter is beyond the curvature it will not receive the signal through the direct wave mode as well as the reflected wave mode. So, this is something which is the limitation in this particular case. In this particular topic we discussed about the two different modes of communication. Our prime focus was on wireless communication. So, we discussed about communication via unguided media that is utilizing the atmosphere or the space. We discussed about ground wave propagation, then we talked about sky wave or ionospheric propagation where the reflection takes place from the ionospheric layers and then we had a brief idea about space propagation. Now, in the next particular topic we will discuss about the satellite communication process which is something we see around us every now and then. So, whatever we are seeing in the communication domain state satellite communication is very important for that. Thank you learners.